First things first, the Pond Prowler and the Quest Angler are both identical boats from the same manufacturer sold in different department stores. For example, if you walk into Bass Pro, you'll be buying the Pond Prowler. Dick's Sporting Goods, on the other hand, sells the Quest Angler. I have the Pond Prowler. Ironically, that looks more like the Quest Angler. Anyway, here's everything you'll need to know. So let's start with the stability. The most common question I get when I'm posting in the Tiny Boat Facebook groups is stability, and for a good reason. These boats are not a flat bottom design, they're actually pontoon boats, meaning these have incredible stability. I was shocked. My wife and I have never felt like we were in danger of tipping, even in white caps on a windy day in the ocean. I've walked on the very edge to switch seats with my wife, no problem. I had a West Marine water tender and actually sold it after 20 minutes of use. I realized that nothing will beat the Prowler in stability. We feel very stable even when I stand up, take a couple steps and cast. I'm a stand up fishing kind of guy. This is built for fishing, so it's extremely stable for two adults. 10 out of 10 stability, not hardly any room for improvement. All right, this leads us into our next segment, maneuverability. For the first couple weeks, I would solo load and unload the boat full of gear into my six foot bed. It fits absolutely perfectly. I just flip my seats upside down and leave the motor, cooler, rods, batteries, paddles, literally everything in the boat in the bed of my truck. I load it all in my truck, drive down the highway multiple times per week with no issues. However, it did start becoming annoying loading it up solo in the bed of a truck after a long day fishing. Uh, so now I actually have a trailer, but I had one anyway. I probably wouldn't spend the money on a dedicated trailer, uh, just because even small jet ski trailers is going to be way more than I paid for the boat. And that's what a lot of people say. It's a hassle to drag, honestly. I know people always say you can drag it to hard to reach spots for the best fishing. I've done that twice. I only had to drag my boat about 25 to 30 yards and had to take multiple breaks. It was not fun at all. And now I find myself only putting my boat in at places where very, very little carrying slash dragging is needed, which means boat ramps. Luckily, I have a solid 10 to 15 options in my city of boat ramps here in Panama City, Florida, and I don't really recommend trying to drag it. It's not good for the boat, and it's not good for you. Honestly, it's not a kayak. It's a little over 100 pounds, which is extremely light. However, loaded with gear and dragging alone is not like trying to drag a kayak. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10 on maneuverability. It's obviously worse than a kayak and way, way better than standard boats. Now let's move into my favorite segment, and that's functionality. The functionality in these boats is honestly really good. The raised seats allows 360 degree casting with lots of comfort and legroom, depending on your gear. There's no dry storage, live well, or anything too cool like that because, well, it's a plastic mold boat. However, there still are a few things I really, really appreciate. For one, it has two bow and two stern cleats. Lots of other tiny boats require you to drill into the boat itself to attach your own, like my water tender. However, this is a nice feature. It's also pre-wired for bow mounted trolling motors. There's a dedicated battery slot as well as straps to keep it in place. You can attach the wires to the battery, the wires are pre-wired inside of the hole, and they run to an adapter on the bow you can directly plug into and have power. Amazing, amazing feature. It comes with two rod holders, which is nice. It looks great, but honestly, a major, major oversight and my biggest complaint in this boat is not having any rod holders on the stern. The two rod holders in this boat are really only able to be handled and used by the person sitting up front. I just either have to hand my wife who puts the rod in its holder or just lay it flat on the edge. I have clamp-on rollers coming in the mail, and I'll feature those on the channel soon once they arrive. Now, water drainage. Water drainage is definitely a welcome feature on this boat. Everything runs into the stern of the boat that pools by the interior drain plug. So at the end of the day, you just pull the plug and you're good to go. However, I have foam mats so we can actually take on a lot of water before even getting our feet wet. However, we've literally never taken on water, aside from what a fish might bring in. Uh, but even then, that's not an issue because I never really catch fish that much and when we do we snap a pick over the edge of the boat and then release it features compared to other plastic boats will be a 9 out of 10 nothing has more for the price just add more rod holders speaking of that let's talk about the price for 800 to 900 dollars that's actually cheaper way cheaper than high-end fishing kayaks that are pedal driven 
I know someone who has a 25, oh, I'm sorry, it's a $2,700 pedal driven fishing kayak. And I actually only paid $300 for this boat. I bought another kayak that I sold for $350. So this is an amazing value, especially used. And this boat that I paid for $300 for actually came with those aftermarket seats, two bow mounted pole handles, and a paddle holder. If you can buy any of these for under $500, you're immediately in profit and can make money. I actually bought this boat to flip and make money, but ended up falling in love with it. Buy used, folks. Most people will sell way cheaper than the new price with custom mods to save you time and money. Like I said, even if you get $600 and someone put in a couple mods, that is an absolute steal. Even at eight to $900, depending on what store sales and model you get, it's still a pretty good value. The price has to be a solid nine out of 10. 10 out of 10 would be if a trolling motor and battery would be included at that price, because a lot of new tiny boats are doing that these days, but that'd be a truly wild value, and I don't really expect that, and I'm not complaining. So let's talk about customization. One of the best parts about these tiny plastic boats. Honestly, part of my love of this vessel stems from my absolute passion for customizing this boat. I've only reached the tip of the iceberg on mods you can do. Mods are cheap, anybody can do them, if I can, and like I said, there's some insane builds out there. I'm a part of about four pond prowlers slash quest angler, bass raider, sun dolphin, they're all the same, Facebook groups, because people post their amazing mods. You'll find unlimited inspiration there. Customization is truly a 10 out of 10. You can drill and mount anything, anywhere. Now I wanna talk about those Facebook groups a little bit further because this has been a great, great resource. You can just go to Facebook, go to groups, and then just type in Pond Prowler, Quest Angler, any stuff like that. I'm also a part of Tiny Boat Nation, and I just like to hang out in there basically every evening and see what people are up to, see what builds they're doing, what questions people have, what solutions people are finding to problems, what problems are people having? You know, it, it's just a really, really good resource and I highly recommend it. Um, anyway, guys, overall, I'm gonna give this boat a 10 out of 10. I thought long and hard, but comparing how much value you get for the price compared to a kayak and how much cheaper, easier, and maintenance-free it is compared to a traditional boat, I don't know what else to give it besides a whopping 10 out of 10. It serves a very, very particular need and does it better than the competitors. Hats off to whatever Chinese fella pumps these out. I'd love another one. I'd like more. I want more. Anyway, guys, subscribe if you'd like to see us take our tiny boat on beautiful Florida adventures. Happy prowling.